asked if I would show you the downstairs of my house and inside more areas of my house. I don't do it a lot, but I tend to do it in the cold weather months and around the holidays when I come in from the garden. If you want to go look at how it has looked kind of in the past, then there are some holiday, I think the last time we shot it was during the holidays last year. Isn't that right, Stuart? I think so. Um, so at any rate, if you want to know what it kind of looks like decked out for fall, then here you go. Stuart and I, I think just day before yesterday, we shot a thrifting video on fall finds and how we can kind of st style things for fall and get our hooga on. Hooga being all about making our homes cozy and comfortable and engaging as the cold winter months start to approach. And so I did some styling things, but uh, and a lot of them related to fireside living, um, getting, I'm getting my fireplace cleaned out, I'm getting my, my different furnaces, all of those serviced and things. And to me, a lot of fireside living for this time of year is all about books. So that leads me to my question of the day. Um, I I love reading books about, I love memoirs, I love biographies, I love historical figures and what kind of inspires them and how they live my, their lives. So that brings me to my question of the day. Make me a book recommendation on some kind of biography or memoir or something that really fascinates you about an inspiring character. I'm reading right now about um, a woman who was a head, head of the French resistance in France during World War II. I find it really, really fascinating. So that is my question of the day for you. Please give me some suggestions below. Now that, my questions of the day sometimes I admit are very, very selfish because I'm a questioner and I really do read your responses. And the question that I posed last time about what was a recent risk or uh, risk and risk reward scenario in your life recently and the comments blew up. I could not believe what great responses you guys gave me. The, the depth, the breadth of them was overwhelming and I can't comment on everyone, but I promise you I read everyone and this may be one of the, my most favorite comments I have ever gotten here on YouTube. And it was, and I did ask permission to share this, so I, I do not share your comments without permission. This one was from a gentleman, Harper Explores. And he said, my wife's grandmother and grandfather were starting to really slow down in life. And my wife asked if they could come move in with us so we could take care of them. I gave up my independence and gained so much more. My wife's grandma has become my biggest fan in the garden and it makes me so happy to bring in her cut flowers from the garden and wheel her out to see the work I have done. Such a great risk and was blessed with my biggest motivation for gardening. And then there were so many comments on his comment. It obviously struck a note. It resonated with so many of you. And I just can't tell you how touched I was and, and just how brave all of you guys are because I am not a very brave person. And so the fact that you guys take such risks that are related to caring for your loved ones, um, moving to a new place to kind of enhance your quality of life or have a bigger garden or a smaller garden. All of those things are so inspiring to me. So thank you so much, Harper, and thank you so much. I read this off of Stuart's phone. Um, but thank you to all of you who so generously shared your risks. It was so much fun. And I would encourage you guys to, to not only share your comments, but read the comments of others because you will learn so much information. I learn from you guys a lot more than you learn from me, I promise. So now about, uh, about my living room in my 1932 English Tudor house, my plaque outside, these historical homes in Crown Heights, we're about five minutes from downtown, we all got historical plaques. It's a historical preservation area. So when we do things to our home, the exterior of our homes, we have to get permission and go through kind of um, a board to get approval to do things so it doesn't, uh, I guess, really kind of diminish the historical value of the exteriors of our homes. And my little plaque says 1935, but record show was actually built in 1932. So when we moved in, um, everything, for the most part, we repainted everything. 
The hardwood floors, we did not have to refinish downstairs. We had to refinish them upstairs. But all of the mahogany woodwork, all of that is original to the house. The curved ceilings, um, one of the features I love best about my house are the entries with the curved passageways. I love that. And then many, many years ago, long before faux finishes were popular, I saw this faux finish that looked really like an aged tavern in a bar in New Orleans. And I came back and uh, the person that did the walls actually was an artist, wasn't even a painter. It was a local artist and they were able to capture this really aged feel of aged walls that uh, were in a tavern over time. So I just, I really love it. And I don't know that I could ever bear to paint over it. So I'll have to move because I won't be able to paint over it. Um, the fireplace around, everything is original to the house. I've got it kind of decked out right now with a beautiful oaken acorn garland for fall that I got from Terrain as part of their Together Weather campaign. I loved it and I think it looks so beautiful there. And I'll, I might or might not leave it up for the holidays, for Christmas, I'll definitely leave it up for Thanksgiving and I may or may not festoon it with some live, with some live greenery. Um, one thing that I like to do is, is especially during fall is I just love to forage. So I found an interesting branch in my front yard. I'm always getting branches out of my front yard because the wind will have its way with my oak tree. And I love the silhouette of that. I love the architecture of it. And I love the fact that it's got some, um, some acorn heads that have lost their acorns, but I just like the way it looks. And then I spray painted it kind of a metallic, uh, a metallic bronzy brown color and it's my new attempt at having a little bit less of a maximalist, a little bit more of a minimalist vibe in a house that lends itself to maximalism, I guess. Um, the bookshelves are our reproductions and they were found by a designer that worked for my husband's, my husband's business. He had an office furnishings, or still does, have an office furnishings business for many, many years. And she found these old, um, well, they're not really old, but reproduction kind of library cases. And I just love books. So the books that this holds are some of my most beloved gardening books. They also hold some books that are very, very precious to my husband because they belong to his father and his grandfather. You can see like here's a book about the Cherokee Strip. That's very, very much of an Oklahoma thing. Um, Geronimo, the Bobsy Twins. So some of these are books that speak to the past. A lot of them speak to the to the present and the future, however. And you guys know, I talk, speaking of books, I talk about this a lot in my own book, The Elegant and Edible Garden, that you guys can pre-order now, there's my commercial, um, about what a tremendous influence that Rosemary Berry had on my garden. And so I keep her books, I have a number of them, I keep them down here. Uh, my younger son, or my older son, Johnny, is very much a scholar. He has, he speaks fluent Hindi, Urdu, some Russian, and a lot of his books uh, from college and from his graduate studies are in here because these are books that he definitely does not want to give away and wants us to hold on to for him as he lives in Singapore right now. I have lots of books that I also keep in one area in here. I got this from my mom. She did the same thing in her bookshelf um, about Thomas Jefferson and Monticello. My son went to the University of Virginia. I love reading about as I said earlier, biographies and information about historical characters of the past. So those are kind of an aggregate in here. And then my other fun thing that I can't tell you, if you want to get, give yourself a little jolt of joy, then put all of your children's, I don't care what age they are, 
put all of their favorite children's books in one location and periodically, depending on the season, just pull them out. So here's one kind of silly thing that I do. I do not have grandchildren. My boys are older and have moved away from home, but when it is the appropriate season, then I take out their favorite childhood books of that season and I put them out where I can look through them, remember those sweet times of reading to them when they were little, and then a lot of times I will just take a screenshot of these books and just send it to them to give them just a little jolt of joy and a little flashback into their childhood. And it gives me just immense, immense pleasure to do that. Some of my favorite ones are obviously, if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a mouse a cookie, um, this one I especially love, Good Days, Bad Days. It's, it was just really a good learning device for the kids, especially when we lost a pet. So. Anyhow, that's kind of a fun little thing that I like to do, and these books are very precious to me. So I would say this bookshelf holds some of our more valuable books and things that, uh, and valuable, not necessarily monetarily, but valuable to us in a sentimental way and sometimes in a, in a family way. Um, and speaking of books, here's my book table over here, and this is constantly on rotation what books are here and what books move in and out. Um, right now I've got a number of William Yaward books. He passed recently, um, I think in the past year, it might have been last year, but I got some of his books out here. Um, this one my son gave me, one of my favorite gardening books of all time not so much for the pictures as much as for the prose. This is an old, old book, A Vineyard Garden by Molly Chapelet. You can get this for pennies off of Amazon used and new. And then I've got uh, Rosemary Berry's The Garden in Winter. Anyhow, books that I want to revisit and look at again, either because of their seasonal overtones or just because I haven't looked at them in a while. Um, some of the newer books that I have Amber Lewis is very, very popular right now. She's got a book uh, made for living, and I promise this was not staged. I forgot this was, was even here. Uh, this is like a faux, a faux book that they sent me, the publisher sent me. The book will be out in March, The Elegant and Edible Garden, and you can see that it's a faux book because it's just got blank pages in it. But before too long, it will be filled with all sorts of valuable, heartfelt, uh, wisdom <laughs> and content from me and lots of Stuart's beautiful photography. So I oh, want another book that I am loving right now is British Designers at Home. This is from Jenny Rosines, a friend of mine that lives in Australia, and she is just wonderful on Instagram, very much speaks to my style, and I love her work. So those are, I didn't really intend to get in some of those books, but it's all about book season. Um, so my, my decor. So I've really been into foraging and into gorgeous leaves right now and creating leafy bouquets. Stuart uh, kind of coined the phrase bottle bouquet, so I'm going to coin the phrase leaf bouquet. And there are some fabulous sycamore trees on my street that, that produce these mammoth leaves that come down and I just love them. I love the tawny color, which is a color I'm obsessed with right now, this kind of tobacco color and the uh, alternate size of the aged green. I love these colors, but I'm as interested now in the folds of the leaves. And to enhance that, I haven't, I haven't done this one, but to enhance the qualities of the leaves themselves, what I've done is give them just a little spritz of spray glossy enamel. You can get that in the spray paint, uh, in the spray paint section of, you know, any, really anywhere, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local hardware store. And then I've just created these Stuart especially likes these. They're just leaf bouquets. And what I do is I make several smaller bouquets that I just secure with a twist tie or rubber bands and then I put them together into a larger bouquet. And I have these staged 
kind of throughout the house and you can see if you look from the top down that they just have kind of a subtle gleam to them. Look at the color of this leaf in particular, which is just exceptional. So um, it's all about fall to me. I love, I love their dried earthy fragrance. And you can see in here that some of these folds are just really, really wonderful. And I like them in bouquets like that, but I also like branches of beautiful leaves. I loved this kind of celeriac seafoam green of this one branch. So I brought it in and I spray painted it and I adorned it with some green Nandina berries. And then I had these wonderful dried gourds, some of which I left in their natural state in this kind of mahogany color. But then some of them I spray painted to look like stone or concrete. And I think they look really, really beautiful. And these are things that I do save from one year to another. I like the way they look just piled here. I sometimes will put them on top of a candlestick as a finial. Um, sometimes I'll add lots of color with autumnal leaves that are in shades of crimson and um, oh, kind of wine port and really deep intense shades of maple leaves. But then today, I just wanted something that was a little bit quieter. This was a thrift store find. You guys have seen it before. It was um, kind of an inexpensive wood candle holder that I got at a, at a wood shop and, or at a thrift shop and I spray painted it. I'm gonna come around to this side, Stuart, but I spray painted it. And you guys, I, I love this, especially at Halloween. I could put black candles in this and I just, I just love the way it looks. And at Halloween, I don't mind that the candlesticks are kind of a little bit wonkish and not standing straight up. At Christmas time, I could make little evergreen bobbishes and put them around it and maybe tuck in some red berries. So it's uh, something that I can use in multiple, mul multiple ways. Now, on this, especially since I spray painted it with this faux finish, I wanted to make sure that I protected it and there is not a fire hazard. So I ordered a bunch of these off of Amazon. These are just glass bobbishes. I may be mispronouncing that, but it's B-O-B-E-C-H-E-S. And they basically are candle protectors for whatever type of candlesticks you use. And I love to burn taper candlesticks. And so for me, these are indispensable. And part of what I think of as my fall toolkit, and in fact, I should probably let you know what I have in my fall toolkit. So these are things that you can, you can have at the ready. Uh, it's planned spontaneity so that you can at a moment's notice do something that is ever so easy, but ever so life enhancing, and that's light some candles. I, I meditate in the morning, in the winter months, in the cold months, I tend to migrate between the fireplace and the kitchen in here. This morning it was in here and I lit all of the candles um, in and around this room, turned off all of the lights, and then when I'm finished, uh, after I finish my re morning reading or whatever it is I'm doing, then I just blow them all out. So I only leave candles burning in places where I am residing, and as soon as I move from that room, I blow out those candles because obviously fire can be a hazard whenever you use real candles and not battery operated ones. And while I use a sufficient amount of battery operated ones, for me, there is nothing that is so seasonal or so sensual as striking a match and lighting a candle. I just love that, whether it's by my bedside or it's in my kitchen or whatever. Um, so moving around, you can kind of just see some of my old photographs and things. I've actually taken down quite a few because I am trying to declutter. This is my husband's uh, grandparents. Here's my mom and dad, my second mom and my dad. And so this, this bookshelf kind of speaks to old photographs, old black and white photographs. Um, another expression of my obsession right now with this tawny color and green um, is just a still life that will be consumed of Asian pears and, and uh, 
Bosque pear, these aren't Bosque, these are Bartlett pears, along with some of these just beautiful leaves. And the color palette is very restrained. Any kind of edible fruit for the most part that I, I have in my, in my house is washed and ready to eat. Now these won't be consumed nearly as quickly as when my boys were home. They could go through a fruit bowl in one afternoon. <laughs> um, and growing boys will do that. Now I, I use the fruit largely as a still life and because it's beautiful, though they're obviously edible. And just before they start to go bad, that's when I make uh, a pear crisp or a big pot of oatmeal or something and I use up the fruit because I don't want it to go to waste. Though sometimes it ends up at the compost pot, but I do try to use the fruit that I use also as part of decor. Um, here is, I'm kind of redoing and rethinking these pillows. I'm getting ready to treat myself and have all of the cushions of my, my, this couch and love seat restuffed. These, this, uh, these two pieces of furniture, the couch and the love seat, were actually pieces of furniture that my husband had when we got married. So they are old, old, old. They're like 35 years old. And we've had them re, uh, recovered and refurbished once and it's time to have that done again. And I will do that. And I still, it may not be as practical as it should be, but I still like white slip covers. You may too. And I just like the way they look. So I'm willing to put up with having to wash them occasionally and spilt red wine stains on them. Um, over here, Stuart, if you don't mind showing one of the things that we do, we also, I don't, we don't collect a lot of things. I'm, I'm really not a collector, but one thing we kind of, we do tend to, I guess, I guess collect over time are maps. And we're not into having one from absolutely every area, but we do like to have one from whatever, whatever areas we visit. So it is our thing that we bring back as a souvenir when we go someplace is a map of that area of the world or that country or places that are near and dear to our hearts. Here's some more of those wonderful gourds. To me, I mean, there is nothing more beautiful than this gourd. It's got all of the qualities I love, that kind of moldy, aged earthiness to it. I love, love, love this color. I gave it a, a very light satin gloss finish spritz to it so it would illuminate, catch the candlelight and catch the sun, sunshine that kind of cascades through the front door. Talk about elevating something from nature into a work of art. Look at this leaf. Now, Stuart, you may have to actually come over here and get close to this. This leaf just fascinates me. I think it is just eminently beautiful. I love the fold of it. I love the color of it. I love the gradations of color and the texture and the spotting of it. And I gave it a spritz. And to me, it is as beautiful as any kind of sculpture that you could buy, especially when accompanied and staged with these gourds that are of like colors. Um, I'm a big believer, and you guys, I'm no decorator. These are just things that please me over time that I think make pleasing compositions and give me joy and are nature inspired because I live a garden inspired life. One thing I have learned is periodically throughout a room, it's good to have something that is crystal or that is metallic or that will capture light in one way or another, whether that's candlelight, task lighting, a shiny finish, um, anything along those lines. Uh, the pillows are just an assemblage of different pillows I've gotten from a number of different places and I'm kind of rethinking and re my pillows. I've got another on this wall, symmetrical little vignette with another gourd and more leaves. Um, on at the base of the stairs, I've got another little homage to the season, which is some sticks and another leaf. Those are ways that just 
they're not expensive. They give me great joy and they, they put out a subtle fragrance, that subtle earthy fragrance of fall that I just love. So I promise you to share some of the books that I'm reading. And in fact, I'm gonna do a video on this. So I'm not only intrigued by gardeners, but as I age, I'm more and more intrigued with the lives of the gardeners, um, besides just the gardens. And Monty and Sarah Dawn right now, I'm kind of infatuated. Who knew their story was so deep and rich and complex and struggle-filled, and I have just loved reading about them. So I highly recommend The Jewel Garden, a story of despair and redemption and how they came to formulate, build, and create their own garden. And Stuart, turn off that phone. <laughs> and But also, I, I want to I've dog-eared some pages, which my son would just be appalled at, but things that really meant something to me, and these are lessons that I've learned from this book that ha some of them I already knew, some of them were new lessons, but lessons from Monty and Sarah Dawn, and I'm gonna kind of go through my garden and share some of them with you. It's really near and dear to my heart. I'm also reading uh, The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins, and this is a fun book if you want some eye candy. This is India Hicks' book, A Slice of England. So I obviously like English decor in this house. That may change over time if I have a different house. But right now, I really like to look and be inspired by books about English decor. And you can see that elements from this book are also elements that are repeated in, in my house. So there you go. There's some book recommendations for you. And there is, I guess, a little tour of my living room, such as it is. It's not very large, but I hope you will find it cozy and I hope it gives you some ideas to kind of hook up, hook up and up the coziness ante of your own interior spaces. Well, if you've held on for this long, here's your fashion epilogue for today. Most of it is old or very thrifted. Um, my hoop earrings came from Amazon. As you guys know, I love hoop earrings and I have a pretty extensive wardrobe of them. Many of you have asked if I would show you how I store my costume jewelry and at some point in the future, maybe I will do that. My sweater is old as the hills. It is old J. Crew. I got it at an outlet mall in Colorado. My t-shirt is an Amazon Essential. I like to wear this kind of leopard print with a pop of red. So I've got a number of different pops of red, starting with my lipstick. I like to wear red lipstick as kind of part of my, my outfit, I guess. Um, my red glasses are from, I think they're from TJ Maxx. I can't remember. It's all in the details. Do I always coordinate my reading glasses with my attire? No, I do not. This just was a happy serendipitous thing. Um, my bracelets. I love this little pop of red because it reminds me of a fun trip that we took to Chicago with my boys and this came from a street fair and I think it was Lincoln Terrace Lincoln Park in Chicago the bracelet is from an estate sale and a, and a um, uh, gift shop gift what do I want to say jewelry store in Salida that sold estate jewelry from my husband my britches are thrifted I'm not sure what brand they are and my shoes are Alexis Bendel I got these off of Amazon and I really like them they're very 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 comfortable and my belt is from Nordstrom Rack so there you go there is my fashion epilogue for today